I think there are a lot of priorities with the vaccine rollout, and I'd, I'd really like to use my time to advocate for getting the vaccine to the places where the disease is and where the impact has been the greatest. And as we do that, I'd like for all of us as individuals and in members of our organizations to think about how we can help in that process, whether it's by, um, by volunteering, whether it's by, um, by sharing information or recruiting our community and religious leaders to help in the effort. I do think that we owe it really to, to those that have suffered the most. And I think from um, a pandemic standpoint and epidemiologic standpoint, reducing the burden of disease is going to be the key priority to getting this under control. Also with, with the rollout, I just want to encourage patients because the emotions around this are pretty profound. And when we say that people who are 65 and older are eligible, that doesn't mean that there will be vaccine appointments for everybody who is 65 and older. And that is okay. The vaccine will arrive. We will get the vaccines to everybody who needs it. We just need to be patient and keep doing what we're doing. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, Nancy, would you be able to pick up now with uh, your observations? Yeah, thank you. And I have to say my um, my last thoughts are similar. Um, these are safe and effective vaccines. And I really believe that along with continued social distancing and wearing masks, they're our best tool to get us back to some new normal. Um, it's been a hard year for, I think, so many of us in so many different ways. And I know people are frustrated um, that, that there's not enough vaccine for everybody today. You know, I haven't actually been vaccinated yet because I'm not in one of the highest priority groups and um, waiting my turn is, is difficult. And what I would ask people to do is to um, try to be patient, but to use their time wisely to get educated about the vaccine and to help other folks in their communities get educated and get organized so that when vaccine is available, we're ready to roll it out everywhere. And so I think that in this time, what we have it's not the time to just kind of impatiently wait. It's the time to be actively waiting, um, organizing, educating, and being ready to go as soon as there's enough vaccine. Thanks. Thank you, Nancy. Mark, um, what, what, what can you share with us? Thanks. Um, I, I'd like to just inject a, a note of positivity and then, a, and then re return to the question about the globe. I think it's worth remembering that not only has this year been a kind of a whirlwind, um, but that this was the fact that we are here with some vaccines that work uh, and are safe is a testament to a lot of hard work over the last year, but also to scientific forethought. Um, during the Ebola outbreaks in West Africa, it was noticed by global health leaders that there was not a fast enough, a bit, the world did not have the ability to respond fast enough. Um, uh, to these crises and a very deliberate effort uh, started by three uh, individuals writing in the New England Journal of Medicine, growing into the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations and a lot of work uh, in other places, um, laid the groundwork. They said, we need to be ready. Somebody guessed really lucky uh, and well that it would be the coronaviruses were, uh, it wasn't just a guess, it was an educated guess and it was a luck fortunate one. Um, the coronaviruses were important. And that's why we're here now to a very large extent. And so I think uh, um, scientific forethought actually won, helped win the game for us. Um, all of those people were really globally minded. And I think that um, just to return to this notion that uh, it's great that we're getting it out in the United States. Um, and I'm delighted that we are as a country returning to engagement with the World Health Organization um, as one small step towards fulfilling our global responsibility to um, to help get this vaccine, these vaccines out to the world as a whole. Thanks, Mark. And Barry, um, can you wrap us up? Um, I have a reflection that uh, is a little different than my colleagues. Uh, what I've thought about during this conversation is Ronald Reagan's uh, famous line that the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. And uh, we've seen and discussed in this conversation some of the areas where the feds were not there to help, where the leadership, a coordinated plan, a way to link 17 government agencies with statutory responsibility to work in a coordinated way of advocating for masking and public health 
measures and open and closing businesses, whether they were good for health or not. We've seen that. We've seen the difficulty in getting vaccines delivered, and we know we need help. On the other hand, we have to reflect on the fact that the government was there to help before there was COVID. Um, there was the race for vaccines that's been going on for 20 years. As Mark said, uh, people were planning with the new technology for any vaccine that came along. Agencies that most people haven't heard of called DARPA and BARDA were investing in these RNA and other technologies before COVID existed in the hopes that when a new agent came, it could be plugged in and, and used. And the government is providing these vaccines for free to the public which I think is absolutely essential. And um, they have invested and been allowed to invest through BARDA in companies that would not undertake a vaccine for an unknown agent unless somebody agreed to buy their vaccines. And those are advanced market commitments that were made by our government. So I think what I reflect is that COVID has made clear of the circumstances when in fact we, the American people and the global community need government help. Um, Tony Fauci is a recognized hero, a great friend uh, who epitomizes in my view, the best of uh, public servants. Maybe it's time for us to appreciate the many unsung heroes like Nancy and her colleagues at CDC and the people at BARDA that work every day to protect the health and security of the American people. I think it's time to give some credit to the government and the people who keep us safe. Thank you, Barry. Lovely sentiment. This concludes our event for today. I'd like to thank everyone who's joined us and to our wonderful panelists. The panel was jointly presented by the forum at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health and NPR. You can look to the forum website for more information on this and future events. Again, thank you very much for joining us and we hope to see you again at another forum event soon.